Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to look at in th this first video is the new Unify zone-based firewall. So let's let's take a look at this. I, I kind of went over this in my Unify 9 video. And what Ubiquiti has done is that they have tried to make the firewall friendlier. And they tell you this, you know, instead of just looking at this huge long list of rules, which you can see down here, this is kind of the same thing we're used to looking at, they now have this matrix. But before we go in and we just start tinkering, we, we need to familiarize ourselves with the language and look at how they've, they've changed some of the things, right? So up here, we've got our zones. This is internal. Now this is gonna be most of your VLANs. You can see right here, I've got three networks slash VLANs or interfaces. I've got my default, my routed IPs, and I've got one called internets. That's a totally different subnet so that I can plug other devices in and, and you know put a firewall behind a firewall. Then you've got your external, which is your WAN connections. Your gateway is the gateway itself. So remember those, those LAN local and those, those WAN local rules, that's, that's in here. You've got the VPN server zone. You've got your hotspot zone and your DMZ. So when you come down here, this nice little matrix tells us basically what's happening, right? So for the DMZ to internal, we're allowing return traffic. For DMZ to gateway, we're allowing return traffic. If we drill down into these, and I'm going to go internal to internal, and it says allow all, right? So we've got this firewall rule that says allow all the traffic between all of the internal zones. On the <clears throat> the old way of thinking about this, we didn't we didn't really necessarily need a rule. By default, it was there, but it allows all of that traffic. So if we go to create a policy or a rule, let's take a look at the name of all of the new options. They're not really new. They've been kind of renamed, reordered, and things like that. So if we're going to create a policy, and I'm just going to call this test, the first thing that we need to do is we need to look at the source. Previously, this was going to be a network IP address, a network or an IP address, an object, which could have been multiple IP addresses, could have been an entire subnet. Here we're going to select a source zone. So if we create a new VLAN and it's not in one of these zones, then we would need to, to break this down a little bit further. So from internal, you can see that we now have these options to actually break that down. So internally, we can select an entire network, right, which these are LAN networks or our VLANs. We can select those here. So I'll just put internets. Here we could do a specific device, right? So whatever it sees on the network, we can actually create this rule for a specific device. Any is going to be any traffic that matches this. IP is going to be a specific range or subnet. We could add multiples there. Or we can create a new object that houses all of those IP addresses. Or we can do it by MAC address. Then what we can do is we can also then break it down by ports. And it's going to be UDP or TCP. And once again, if we've created objects like we did for our printers, uh, I'm sorry, if we had printer ports in there, so like port 9100 for your raw printing, we could select that. We can do specific ports, and they've got a ton of them that are already listed here. And if it's not in these common ports, we can put the, the port number in here. So we got any, any. Now here's your action. And this, these, some of these should look very familiar to you. So you've got block and then you've got reject. So block is just going to drop the traffic and 
not send a notification. If you reject it, we are actually going to send a, a rejection notification back. And of course, allow is going to allow the traffic. And then we have this nice rule here that now says auto allow return traffic. So we don't have to go in and manually create rules that allow that return traffic. This is going to do that for us. Then the destination is going to be the opposite of the source, right? So where is it going? Is it going to an internal zone and is it going to a network or an IP or is it going anywhere? Same thing with the port here. Here we can then decide whether this is going to be both IP version 4 and IP version 6 traffic or if it's only going to be IP version 4 or IP version 6. Then we can come in here and we can drill down into the protocols. Is it going to be TCP and UDP? Is it just going to be TCP? Is it just going to be UDP? Or if we do custom, we can look at all of these other protocols that are available. So we can actually get down to the protocol level very easily and filter that out or allow it. Then the connection state, if you remember the connection states that we had in the, the old one, uh, this is just changing that, that language on that a little bit. So connection state is going to be all. Is it going to be return traffic or is it going to be custom? And if we go to custom, here's where the old language shows up, whether that's new, invalid, established, or related. And the one thing I will give them props for on this is that when you do that return traffic, you don't have to guess at which boxes to check or anything like that. It's going to set that rule up for you automatically. Here you can match if it's IPsec. You can send any of the traffic that matches this these rules, right? So if we create this policy and traffic is filtered or allowed using this policy, we can send that out to a syslog so we can see that that's happening. And then you can set this schedule this says uh, always daily. Hold on just a second. So we can schedule this so that these rules, maybe you've got some traffic during the day you want to block, but at night you don't care. Or at night you want to block it and during the day you don't care. You can do that here. You can just do it one time daily, weekly, or you can do this, that custom, what I was just talking about. You can do all, all day there. Here we would choose always. And then we can put a description in and actually describe what this policy is doing. So what's this look like if I want to block all traffic from the internet to my, my, name, my main LAN? So block internets to LAN. So the zone that those interfaces are in are internal because they're, they're VLANs that are locally. They're inside, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say network, and I'm going to block internets, and I'm going to block everything. I'm going to block it, and then I'm going to block it to the default, which is my main network. And I'm just going to leave everything else the way it is because I always want to block it. So this blocks internets VLAN from default VLAN all the time. And now I can add this policy and you can see that it's saved. And if I don't like that, I can pause it, I can remove it. Now, if I come in here, now you can see that instead of just allow all, now you can see I've got multiple policies. So I can hit view policies here. And if we scroll down, we can see all of the, we can get rid of the, the built-in, the things that come by uh, default. And if I get rid of everything else, you can see now we've got this block internets to land and we can click on that. We can also reorder it. So you just got to get used to the old way versus the new way, the language and things like that. Once you do that, this is going to be very easy. So in the next video, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to have some gear hooked up. I got a lot of flack on my, on my last video because I created the rules. I know the rules work, but I didn't test them. In this video, what I'm really trying to get across to you is don't be afraid of this. Go in, create a couple VLANs, and 
play around with this. That's what we're going to do in the next video. And then we're also going to look at that DMZ and how DMZ should work because I'm super excited that they actually have this DMZ. And in a real DMZ, uh, if I've got a computer in there and I try to get out, just initiating the traffic from that client, it's not going to be able to get out. But if I have something that comes in and hits that server, it's going to be able to return the traffic. So that, that DMZ, anything that happens in that DMZ, it can't just generate traffic, right? So if I have a camera in that, that network, it can't just send information out. I've got to request it first, right? So I've got to load like the, the admin UI in a web browser or something like that, then it's going to allow me to do that. So that's going to be the next video, which will be out later this week. So I think you're going to see this on Wednesday. So that'll probably be like Friday or Saturday. But if you've got any questions about this, let me know down in the comments. If you are already using this, let me know down in the comments. Let me know some of the coolest things you've done. Let me know some of the problems that you've run into, and we can address those in the next video too. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, if you need someone to look over your policies, your firewall rules, and make sure you've got them uh, in the right order, that they're working properly, uh, whether you're residential, whether you're a business, whether you need voice over IP, security, storage, all those things, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form on the front page, and somebody will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to discuss this or other tech-related items, head on over to community.willyhow.com and sign up and join the conversation. Once again, I'm Willie, and I'll see you in the zone-based firewall rules part two video later this week. Tune in.